Good afternoon, everyone, and uh, welcome to this week's episode of the Friday Review of Apps. Uh, this week, we are hopefully coming to you in higher resolution than usual, um, so you'll hopefully be uh, in a better position to be able to see some of the apps which we're demonstrating. Um, I'm joined today by Fred Chum. Um, my name is Reto, and uh, today we're going to be checking out, uh, well, we've got five apps on the list. We'll see how many we get through. We're going to have a look at Settle Up, um, AT. AOI keyboard, uh, minimal twidget, RD mute, and heart sounds and murmurs. So that's what we're going to be checking out. Right. Uh, that's good. Yeah. Let's kick. Let's kick off. Uh, we've also uh, hopefully got. Um, we'll hopefully be able to be joined by some of the developers um, who we have uh, on Hangout, which we will uh, which we'll put on screen as well. Um, I notice we have one person uh, joined us already. So um, David is here, right? Hi, David. Hi. <laughs> I, I, I think you're yeah, okay. Yeah, I'm muted. Um, perfect. And um, which uh, which app are you the developer for? Uh, Settle up. Settle up. Perfect. All right. Well, uh, let's take a look at uh, let's take a look at Settle up. And before going into apps, I'd like to point out the title that we are introducing today. On screen title. <laughs> On screen That's title. High tech stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so actually, while we've got you, um, did you want to tell us a little bit about Settle Up um, while we fire it up on the uh, on the devices? Okay. Uh, so Settle Up it's uh, an app for group expenses. So when you are uh, in a group of people on a trip or somewhere, you can put uh, payments into the app for the whole group. So like somebody paid for gas, somebody paid for accommodation and stuff like that, and. At the end, the app calculates who owes who, so it saves you from doing this calculation by yourself. Perfect. All right. That sounds so like a useful use case. Sort of synchronization, so you can input the payments into multiple phones across platform, and uh, then it all synchronizes. That's pretty cool. Cool. All right. Let's uh, let's check it out. So um, I've got it here on the uh, on the phone cam. Um, perfect. Um, okay, so you maybe want to lose the overlay as well, so we can see the full thing. All right, perfect. So it's it's a fairly uh, simplistic UI, which is nice, um, easy to see what's going on. Got an action bar there, no menu, uh, no menu key, so that's nice. Uh, let's see. Yep, settings in the overflow menu. That's uh, exactly what we would uh, hope to see, and uh, not a strictly standard setting screen, but uh, it's in line with the rest of the app. Uh, we've got the back or the uh, the up key there, which is nice. Uh, language settings. It's it's pretty impressive that uh, Settle Up is supporting 18 languages. That is that, a good effort. That is <laughs> some effort yeah, right there. The crowdsourcing and it really works. Very nice. Um, so one of the questions I had, uh, you know, you've got the ability to pick language here. Uh, now that's something which the uh, the platform supports uh, sort of natively. Is there a particular reason why you want to give people the ability to choose the language rather than just using whatever the uh, default is for the uh, you know for that phone? Yes. Like for example, me like I'm using uh, my phone in English, but I'm I'm from Czech Republic and I want some of the apps in Czech language. So. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Like a lot of Czech apps have this option. I think it's good to uh, give the choice to the users. But uh, by default, of course, it's uh, what the device is. Okay. okay. Yeah, that makes, yeah, that makes sense. Lots of sense. Um, um, okay. Okay. Um, so, um, we've got so we've got the sync frequency, frequency, which is, uh, which is um, handy. Which is handy. Um, um, notifications, notifications would be, uh, would be uh, the action. Yeah, so, so, so it's all really, really just about, about um, giving people the ability, ability to turn, to turn on, on and off some of the features. Which is nice, which is nice, and, uh, and send uh, anonymous data, data um, opt out, opt out is always is great, always to, great have to have as well. So looking so good, looking so good so far. Um, um, let's have a look. Let's have a look. Uh, so it's using, it's the, dashboard. using the dashboard pattern, pattern. It is, right? it is. Right. So what, what, so do, you what do you think of the, think of the size of the icon? Of the icon? I, think, I, think, I think you know they could be a little bit, a little bit bigger. I think so. Yeah, yeah. That's going to be actually it's actually interesting that you. Um, chosen to use a dashboard pattern, pattern here because it, it, it demonstrates, it demonstrates one, of the, one of the, um, um, you know, one of the you know, reasons, one of the reasons why, that's why that's starting to become less favored UX, UX pattern, pattern. Um, right. is that if you've only kind of got two icons here, um, you know, there's a, a bunch of space which is empty, a bunch of white space, uh, as, as you can see on here. Um, and so it feels like almost new, uh, new group or join shared group should be an action on the action bar uh, rather than you know these these icons, and then you could start uh, right in it. Now, is this something that just comes up the very first time? 
Yeah, that's just for the first time. That's, that's for the first time users. If you if you have the two icons, yeah. Right. Okay. 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 So let's have a look. Just include, just include myself, myself US, US dollars, shared online. Share online. Uh, okay. Create a group. So, uh, one, so thing, uh, one thing I just want to point out. Point out. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Right. Share a group. That's what's using, using App Engine as a back end. Nice. Nice. Very cool. Very cool. So, just. So just let's see. Let's go. Let's go. Uh, okay. I can go group. Okay. Okay. So if I just go so back, just go back, back into the new group uh, for a second, uh, for a second uh, I just wanted uh, to, to point out that on this that screen, you kind of have, kind of have a mismatch of, uh, of uh, UI, styles. UI styles. So you've kind of, so you've got, kind of got the blue create, blue create button, button at the bottom. You've got right. the uh, the gray background group not shared online. Uh, you've got the new style uh, text edit up the top with this sort of image button which looks kind of out of place. So sort of three different button styles uh, for the for add and, and, and group not shared and create. Um, so one thing you may want to consider is to sort of pick a style and make sure that everything is consistent um, within your app so it all looks kind of the same way rather than trying to have to figure out is this a button, is this not a button, that sort of thing. Yeah, it looks like since you've taken the efforts to theme the action bar already, I think you know uh, you, it, the app can benefit from you know going one step further by theming the other control elements as well as Rito pointed out. Cool. All right. Well, <laughs> apologies. Uh, all right. Let's uh, let's jump back. So we've got the group created now. Uh, so it says what group we've got in. Create new payment. Um, so again, the same sort of comments here. Um, you know, different styles uh, of the same sort of UI elements. Is something you may want to consider. Uh, let's say it's fifty bucks. Oh, it brings up a calculator. That's nice. Times two. All right. So that's. Are we projecting the phone right now? Uh, no. <laughs> Maybe we can uh, project the phone. Switch to the phone. Oh, hold up. We have the most amazing echo. It's absolutely horrible, um, and we think it's related to the Hangout. Okay. Um, if you're switching to a new app, I, I think the only thing we need to do is cut the Hangout at this point. All right. Can um, give me one second. I'll try to pass this. Right. So I've already muted this guy. Yeah, I haven't well, well, actually, well, actually, are we well, muted here? Are we on air right now? Right now? Yeah. Yes, we are on air. All right, just one second. Are we on mute? Nope. All right. Just one well, second. Let's, let's try it. No, no, just, just as it is, that should have solved it. Okay. <laughs> so uh, I don't know whether we're still badly echoing. Uh, hopefully, Billy will be able to tell us in a couple of seconds, our off-screen uh, viewer, to see whether we are still echoing really badly. Yeah, apologies for the technical difficulties today, yes. but this is the first time ever. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, Every yeah. time we try and do something new, there uh, it introduces a bunch of uh, new potential problems. Right. But um, Always, uh, how are we to... doing echo-wise? Still echoing? As in, you're, you're shaking your head. And I don't know whether that means echoing or not echoing. Oh, <laughs> Apologies, everyone as we uh, try and work our way through. Yeah, Billy says thumbs up. So we're so good. I think we're good. Let's go back to settle up. Yeah, all right, perfect. All right, so back to settle up. Apologies to everyone for the, uh, for the horrendous echo. So we're just uh, going through uh, settle up now, um, trying to check out some of the, uh, some of the features. Um, so yeah, as we, as we, uh, if we can so switch, switch back, back to the, uh, to the phone, to the phone cam. Mm -hmm. Ian, if we can switch back to the phone cam. Possibly not. How about a tablet? Anything. Hey, Ian, can we uh, have a look at the phone? All right. Yeah, excellent. Um, yeah, so as we're looking at this now, we can see same same sort of comments as we had before. I'm not sure uh, how well you heard, heard those, but it's... Um, Trying to keep the same sort of UI elements uh, consistency uh, throughout. Um, so add payment, uh, and let's see. So I guess one one comment here. It's not entirely clear, um, you know, what the workflow is. So we've added a new payment. I presume now, if we add uh, who should pay, 
because there are no deaths. Interesting. Hmm. So it's not entirely clear to me, I guess, what the uh, what the workflow is. So I guess when you add a new payment, you need to add. Um, oh, I see. Add the people as well. You add a group and then add a people. I assume. Gotcha. So yeah. what you can do is is basically each time you have a, a new payment, you say who paid for it and who owed what right. and, and and those sorts of things. Is that right? Okay. Right. Cool. And there's a great feature that on this screen that we're looking at here, uh, it's got a camera icon where I assume you can snatch snap snap a picture of the receipt for uh, record purposes. That's pretty cool. Excellent. Um, okay, <coughs> let's have a look. So, so again, even still at this point, I'd say that the, um, the, the tablet, uh, I should say the dashboard pattern here is probably not your best bet. Um, you know, you probably want to have these. These are all probably decent um, action items uh, where you have, you just need to sort of figure out what the what the main screen would be, mm -hmm. and then and then choose between them. So new new payment and who should pay, uh, settled debts all seem like they should be um, you know the actions rather than being on the on the the home screen. Um, but the question there would have to be you know what what is the home screen? What would you go into? What are your thoughts there? Yeah, I think that that's uh, I think for this particular app, since you can either view um, debts or add debts, I think you know it's probably okay. Um, to have the high level, the, the most likely used item surfaced up on the same screen. Uh, but it, you probably want to put some thoughts into um, how to best arrange the different icons. Mm -hmm. yep. Okay, um, so let's uh, switch to the, uh, to the tablet view. Let's have a look at the look at this tablet. Earlier on. Yeah, so um, this is, you know, as you can expect, a wider view of what we just looked at on the Galaxy Nexus device. Um, so there are two versions, right? Uh, what we're looking at is the free ad-sponsored version. And you can see the ads up here, uh, down here, actually, rather. Uh, it's actually, in terms of the ad, ad type, it's the same size as the one that we saw mm, on that particular is, yeah. smaller screen device. Uh, so you can think of you know, using a bigger ad type, if available on the particular ad network, mm -hmm. to so, sort of fill up the application a little bit more. Yeah, it, so sounds, it sounds almost counterintuitive to, to make a bigger ad, but in, in this case, it would actually look better. Um, right. And so I, I think it's... Yeah, definitely worth doing. Yeah, because of, of, of the bigger screen. And also, the size of icons, which is sort of similar to an earlier comment on the size of icons here, but on a bigger screen, it becomes more apparent that um, the icons are too small, probably, on this um, screen size. Mm, absolutely. Yeah, so uh, it, let's have a look at payments log. So I have created a few payments uh, before the Hangout as I was playing around with the application. And you have a, a list view showing all the available uh, payment um, records. Mm -hmm. And when I tap on it, I was under the assumption that I would actually go into the detail of the payment. But mm -hmm. instead, a pop-up came up, and which, gi which gives me an edit or delete option. So I think it would make sense to probably um, do the edit payments as soon as you tap on one of the list views. Mm. You get to this screen, and then somewhere on this screen, you expose the delete payment option for yeah. the users to delete if they want it to be. So what are your thoughts on that, David? Okay. Uh, I just want to talk more about the uh, dashboard pattern. Like yeah. You, you said that uh, everything should be actions. And I have a lot of actions there already, so I was thinking that it would be too confusing to have everything in the action bar. And like these four functions are like what I'm pitching to the user, what is most important. So. Mm. Yeah, okay. I mean, that's a fair call. It's, what, what we found is one of the reasons why the, uh, the dashboard pattern is, is uh, becoming less counterintuitive is because it, it kind of it works in, in your instance, um, but, but kind of that's, that's almost the edge case. Um, you know, as soon as you have more than sort of four things, uh, it's not clear how you expand that. And, and if you look at it on the tablet in particular, it's a great example because you've got sort of your four icons sort of swimming in the middle of this large space. Um, and so that, you know, that's one of the challenges that you have um, when, uh, when you're using dashboard. Um, you know, it certainly does give you the, the right sort of pathway into showing what the key elements are. Um, but if you have a look at something like Google Maps, uh, which does something similar, like it's, um, they've got like a, a bunch of sort of sub apps uh, within theirs, like latitude and places and all those things. Um, all available from that spinner. Um, that, that tends to be more of a preferred way because it scales better and it makes it easier for you to figure out how you're gonna make that layout work on tablets. Um, in, in principle, it's, it's fine, but like I say, if you, if you look at the tablet version, you can see where the drawbacks are. You've just got this, the four little icons in the, in the middle of the screen.
Yeah, I agree. It's not optimized to do fragments and stuff for it. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah, the, the last thing I wanted to point out is that uh, under the overflow menu, you have uh, remove ads and more. It's an upsell option, basically, directing the user via an intent to go. What, to, so you go through this dialog box, and then if, if the user hits buy, you bring the user to the, to the Google Play Store with, the, I guess, the paid version of your application. So we, this is a totally perfect implementation, but also you know, one thing that you can consider using is uh, in-app purchase uh, available for applications. And the second thing that I'd like to point out is that it's more for the intent flag. Uh, so as if you remember from Settle App, now that we are at the Google Play client, you can think of it as an activity stack. So if the user at this point taps on home, it goes back to home screen as expected. But if the user goes back to settle up, now um, the previous scene uh, Google Play client popped up because it's on top of the activity stack. So uh, when you, in, in, but instead when I, let, let me go back. When I tap on the settle up icon, I, I expect it to go into your application mm. instead of seeing so another application which currently happens to be on top of the settle up yeah. stack. So um, when you find the intent for uh, bringing up the Google Play um, uh, landing page for your paid application, there's a flag that you can set. Yeah. Um, and uh, that flag is called flag activity. I'm, I need to read it off from my. Uh, flag <laughs> activity clear when task reset. So if you look look in, into uh, look at the Google um, Android Developer Stream, that's one of the posts uh, from mm -hmm. Diane, I believe, uh, that talks about this kind of interactions. That's something that you can avoid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But uh, that's all. I, I think all in all, this is a very um, uh, practical application. Yeah, definitely right. useful. Um, yeah. Yeah. Nice one. So uh, yeah, thanks for joining us and uh, a nice work. I think there's a few things you can do there, particularly the the tips which uh, which Fred passed along. And just uh, like I say, just the, you, your user experience, your UI design is good. Uh, like it's it's definitely um, you know it's definitely a nice looking app. It, it feels clean. Uh, it's not cluttered. Um, but I think you know the, the key thing you need to to maybe check out in order to to sort of think about taking the app to the next level is making sure you have a nice, clean, consistent UI, preferably something which on my uh, Ice Cream Sandwich device looks native for Ice Cream Sandwich, so using the, the modern flat buttons and, and text edits and all those sorts of things. Um, and then also just thinking about how you want the app to work on, on tablets. And so if, even if you're not doing a, a full sort of tablet redesign, which, which I think would be a, a valuable thing, um, just thinking about how everything should expand to, to fill the space in a, in a kind of a logical way, I think would be a good first step. Okay, thank you. Great. Cool. Thanks right. for joining us today. Cool. All right, let's uh, let's move on. Let's um, let's have a look at the ATAOI keyboard. Uh, now, I think right. you've managed to get it installed on the, uh, on the yes, tablet. Yes, I arm, have. Which is nice and high depth. Yes, so. I have. Um, is the developer with us? No. I don't think so. All right, maybe next time. Uh, so let's, let me uh, fire up, say, uh, Gmail, right? Gmail. All right, this is my test screen. So here's the... IME. It's interesting. Um, so I have no idea how to use it, <laughs> but I think you know there, there must be a purpose for a certain demographic. So uh, and I probably we need probably need to spend more time practicing. Yeah, I think the it, key here is it's supposed to be fast. It's supposed to be a right. five finger sort of scenario. Right. So uh, if you uh, so my cursor is up here, and, and if you do some swiping and tapping. Um, you see text, but let's let's have a look. Let's see if we can, if we can work it out. So let's have a look logically. I'm going to try and type. Um, well, let's go with. Let's see, no, that's interesting. Let's type Android. Oh, okay, yeah. A. Where's the N? It's kind of. Uh, and, and my understanding is that for some characters, you have to swipe on. Um, one of the keys. Mm, it's definitely so not it's, obvious. It's not obvious. Yeah, but so that's the backspace. So swiping, right. swiping that way is giving me G. That's interesting. Interesting. And enter doesn't really give me a character right, return. But right. if you switch to, you won't be able to switch to landscape. Oh, well, okay. See, so yeah, I can, uh, I can try and can, it up. I can't do that. But I think that's a view where there's a help screen. But I think one sort of feedback from a technical angle 
is that uh, when you tap on any of these keys, you don't get the visual feedback. Mm. Right. Yeah, that's so that's true. something for you, you to think about. Hit. Yeah. So I, I think one of the challenges here is that it's it's pretty baffling um, if you haven't sort of been given the instructions. Yeah, you really want to spend on. some time practicing uh, using yeah. ESI. And I think it might be useful to have uh, something like that built built into the app, um, sort of a, an easy way to get a tutorial up from this screen, given right. that it's it's not obvious exactly how it's how it's used. Um, so that's part of that's our fault uh, for not spending a little bit more time figuring it out. Right. Um, but just looking at the uh, sort of looking at the UI uh, by itself, one of the things I want to mention is that it's uh, it's quite it's quite blocky. Um, so it's big and it takes up a lot of the screen. Um, yeah, let's have a closer look at it here. Do you have it on the Galaxy Nexus? Uh, I do. I haven't actually figured out how to uh, uh, how to bring why, it up. Why don't you comment? Yes. Yeah. Let, let me. Perfect. Um, yeah. yeah. So oh, this is nice. Um, so. One of the things which I like about a lot of the custom keyboards is that they look really polished, they look really nice, and, and given the keyboard is something which is going to come up a lot, um, it's worth spending that time to really make it, to, to round the edges and, and really polish it up and, and make it look, you know, really slick. Uh, and that's something which I think this particular keyboard could do a good job of. Um, so things like the, um, the, the input, like the, uh, the feedback to show you that you've actually touched something. Well, actually, on the phone version, it's got the there's some sheet. instructions. Nice. All right, let's, uh, let's, let's bring switch the, uh, to the phone. Bring the phone up here, yeah. and uh, and we should hopefully be able to, uh, to get a little bit more guidance. Thank you. All right. Yes. Um, All right. Well, I think we may need to go bigger. Yeah, that's the way. Almost. Yes, perfect. Um, okay. Um, so it does have a cheat sheet, but I have to admit that the cheat sheet is not helping me a lot here. Um, so it shows me how to do emoticons. Oh, so right. I can swipe through, so that's quite handy. Um, so as I'm swiping through the tutorial, I'd, I'd point out that it would mm. be useful for this to be more of a, a view pager implementation, um, so that I can see that swiping is actually right. doing something. Can you do a view pager in an IME? I, have no I haven't idea. done it, I haven't done it, so <laughs> I don't know the answer to this. Uh, but if you can't do a view pager, it would be useful to at least uh, you know, have it sort of pan uh, smoothly in the same way. Right. Um, so let's have a look. We'll tap the blue key once for E, green key for T, yellow for A, orange for O, and red for space. Slide up starting from red key for I. Interesting. To delete a single character, slide up starting from the blue key. To delete five characters at once, slide down starting from the blue key. Okay. Well, uh, there's some practicing. So this this is uh, this is this is kind of a complicated scenario. So uh, <laughs> uh, what I would what I would definitely provide feedback for. I'd be interested to find out how many users you have and if this is designed around a, a specific use case, you know, if this is implementing sort of a known keyboard pattern. Or right, that's why I'm wondering too. Yeah. yeah, or is this just totally invented from scratch? Because if it's from scratch, I think you're going to find it quite difficult to uh, to train people to use this keyboard because it's, it's complicated. Um, it's very complicated. Um, in terms, like I say, in terms of the look and feel, so leaving aside the functionality and how, how easy it is to use, I think the, the key stuff here is that you want to be providing more feedback. And so um, as I'm pressing these things, while things are happening, uh, it's not clear which key that I am touching. Um, so I definitely want to be able to see, when, as I do a finger down, I want to see the, blue, the green key or whichever one I've selected change color or change mm -hmm. state in some way so that I know that I've, I've done that. Um, and then if there's a way to be able to provide some on-screen assistance so that I know what to do next, um, that would also be be very valuable as I start to drag to give some idea of, you know, what what is this going to do? Um, yeah, see, because we know that... Maybe you can introduce a beginner mode versus an advanced yeah. mode. <laughs> I'm sure after a week or so, if we're actively using it, we can be experts exactly. using it. But exactly. for beginners like us right now, uh, it would be very helpful to have some sort of visual cue mm -hmm. and instructions, which you have, but it can probably use some improvements, yeah. at least for us. Uh, <laughs> the other thing, I'd, uh, other thing I'd point out, so yeah. on, the, on the phone here, it's, it's, it fits perfectly along the bottom, uh, which is as you'd expect. And you'll note that on the tablet, it was sort of stuck just on the, the left-hand bottom corner. Um, so that's something that you want to look at. Make sure that, the, um, that whatever the optimization is, that it works on a variety of devices. Right. Try and put this into uh, landscape mode. So yeah, as soon as I put it into landscape, I get the same effect um, with the keys just on the, the bottom left, sort of not spreading out. Now that may be intentional, um, but I think it's something that you want to consider, like 
you know, I would think if it's supposed to be for, for fast, sort of easy to reach with your thumb type typing, mm -hmm. then a better approach, um, you know, a landscape mode would be to split it up on either side. So you've kind of got thumbs on either side. Um, so that's something to consider as well. Just how does, how does this keyboard work on different size screens, different layouts, uh, different devices, those sorts of things. Um, but it's definitely interesting. Yeah. Definitely interesting. I think so too. Um, yeah. We'd like to get some feedback from the developer yeah, if you're online or give us comments. Um, we would love to hear from you. We can maybe take a, another look um, at the app once we uh, once we have a, a or maybe just uh, have a chat um, on, a, on a hangout and find out you know, yeah, a little bit more about it. Seems interesting. I want to be educated on this. Absolutely. Yep. <laughs> All right. So uh, shall Sounds we move good. on to uh, minimal twidget? We're going to have to hammer through these because uh, we don't want to eat into the uh, the games review. You get to take advantage of our ineptitude to have a much more polished production at, uh, at two o'clock. Exactly. Uh, all right. So minimal twidget. Uh, let's have a look here. Uh, I've got it on the phone. I will. Uh, let's see. I'll press the thing. See what it does. So. It's a widget, um, which is nice. So once you, uh, when you click it on the uh, from the launcher icon, it gives you instructions as to how to get started, um, which is nice. Uh, it tells you. So, so I think I, I read I read through the instructions, and Excellent. I think it, it pointed it pointed out. Okay, if you are running pre honeycomb, I believe. Uh, uh, gingerbread you, it, it, okay, pre gingerbread, you, you, it directs you to use one particular version, but if if you're running honeycomb or above, it asks you to use another version. So that's a great use case where you can explore s something like uh, uh, multiple APKs, uh, if, something that, if, if this is something that you can't fit into one APK. But uh, our general gui guideline is to, is to fit the functionality into a single APK so that on your Google Play uh, app listing, you have a single listing. Uh, that'll make it a lot less confusing. So as we as so Reto is trying to... Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and add it, but if you've already got it on your home okay. screen... Okay, yeah, let's switch to, switch to the, the tablet. tablet. All right, so what we're looking at... Okay, let me go back to home screen and I tap on Twidget. So I'm looking at the same instruction uh, activity that Reto just showed us uh, with a bunch of instructions. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, it makes sense for you to sort of at least explore uh, combining the features into a single APK. Um, Okay, so there are some instructions, and um, I go back and I've previously added this um, widget here. So let's but, but let's go through the uh, edit creation again. Hmm. Du, du, du. Oh, I see. So, so I need to log into Twitter. Interesting. I can find find a widget and let me place it on. The home screen here, find a, an available spot, and it gives you um, a bunch of tweets. And I pre previously set up my uh, account. Yes, it's nice. So it does the um, the resizable widget, which is handy. Right. It's got a scroll view in here, um, and there are. It sort of replicated the action bar UI here. Oh, that's and interesting. Yeah. Because I think it makes sense because users are accustomed to using the action bar and all the action bar icons. I, I do notice here. that the um, it's it's a nice idea, but the actual touch targets look really really small. All right. I think That's it'd be sort point. of struggling to hit those. Um, so right. I sort of suggest maybe making them a little bit bigger um, to make them easier for people to uh, to actually touch. Right. That's good feedback. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah. it looks nice. Yeah, and let's t touch on one of these. It brings you to the settings screen, hmm. which looks pretty standard. Uh, hmm. It allows you to update refresh rate and uh, whether you want to ena enable notifications or not. But um, yeah, this is a widget-centric Twitter view. Absolutely. Can yeah. we uh, go back to the uh, back to the home screen and have a look? So what else can we do from the? Um, so mainly this is about just showing um, showing tweets on your home screen. So what happens if you click on one? Does it take you to? Nothing. Oh, no, there it goes. All right. All right. It brings up an embedded web. Oh, so it's, so it's, it, is, it's, it opens the app itself and then puts a puts the link in the web view. That's interesting. Oh, since this is pointing to a link, it opens up a web oh, view. So it opens the link. Okay, there's some intelligence into it. That's interesting. So on the bottom, there are a few um, menu items. Mm -hmm. We can close it or star it. Well, let's go back to. The same. 
So I guess it's this is so this is where you can do the the general Twitter thing. So reshare star um, reshare will open up a, a dialogue to to allow you to do that. Mm -hmm. So that's that's quite nice. What do you think of the layout? Uh, it's interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, in this instance, you can see obviously you're taking up a huge amount of space um, on the tablet. So I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and guess that it's not really being tablet optimized. Mm -hmm. um, I'm interested if this is the actual. So it's actually embedding the, uh, the, the. So it's reading what's in the link and embedding that within it. It's kind of an interesting uh, right. approach. Yeah, let's tap on another tweet without without uh, a link. Without a link. Let's, oh, CNN's got it. Well, <laughs> all of my tweets have links, of course. Um, well, let's have a look at this one. Okay, it just okay. shows you if if a tweet message doesn't have. A link, it doesn't, so it doesn't embed it. Right. But what this does actually show is, is interesting is that um, the actual sort of instruction stuff is just behind it. So obviously that's their main activity and they're popping up the, uh, the tweet details activity on top. Um, and in this instance, that's not great. You kind of have right. this weird experience where you've kind of got this half, well... It makes it very hard sized. to read. Yeah. Exactly. So what yeah. you probably want to be doing there is, um, is not having two activities. So make the, the tweet tweet details um, activity be full, uh, like full screen, mm -hmm. um, so that the, the whole thing is there and, and then sort of ar array your things accordingly. So you shouldn't you shouldn't really have uh, these sorts of actions jumping around differently based on the size of the tweet. Um, you really want to have that consistent, so the actions should always be along the bottom or always along the top. Um, either way, they should sort of consistently be in the same place. Right. That's good feedback. Um, At least the user can focus on the tweet exactly, itself rather exactly. than what's Beneath it. And, and I, you know, seeing as you're using, you're already using the action bar uh, pattern on the Twitter tweet on the widget itself. Uh, I'd consider doing the same sort of thing uh, within the the details view here. Um, so have this set up as a normal activity with the the reply, retweet, star, and, and close uh, actions up the top. And in fact, you don't really need the X. That I think just means close, right? It just uh, exits out of out of this. Oh, actually. Here. Yeah, X yeah. means close. Um, exactly. So I would probably just eliminate that. You just really need the back button to take you back to the, well, to, to close that activity, really. Um, would be kind of neater. Right. Um, yeah, so I, I would, I think that the widget itself looks great. And I do note that this is an alpha version. Um, so obviously there's still some development to be done here right. um, by the dev. The, twi the widget itself looks great. I would, like I said earlier, make those touch targets bigger so that people can actually hit them. Um, and then sort of, I'd say work on the the, the, tw the tweet view, the tweet details view a little more uh, and try and build that up to the same standard and I think you'll have something quite interesting. All right. That's great. Shall we move on? Uh, we should. I think we've got time, time for one more. So we're going right, to cool. skip um, Heart Sounds and Murmurs for next week, I think, and we'll uh, check out RD Mute, which uh, I think is also a widget. Is that right? No, it's, uh, it's an interesting app that oh, um, only works on telephony devices ah, uh, because... Um, so, so apparently they, they have uh, some innovative ways to uh, automatically mute a device. So considering if you are driving or if you're in a meeting, mm -hmm. uh, if you put your telephony device face down, it automatically mutes your device. So that's pretty that interesting. interesting. Let's have a look at it. All right, so we open it up. Oh, look, it's, it's my phone um, that they're using. So that's quite handy. So I know great. it works. Uh, how do you mute? Mutes your phone when you flip down face the phone. Okay. Um. So, so what I've noticed is that there are really, really three things it's trying to showcase, but it tends to skip over the middle. It really does. Yeah, <laughs> it's almost impossible to get the car. Yeah, you probably want to work on the physics a little bit. Yeah, so I think the easy answer here is use the view pager instead, uh, because what you're using here doesn't really work. It's, I'm really careful. I can get it. Yeah, it's to, it's off a little jump. bit. Yeah. Uh, but just a normal swipe just skips part, straight past car mode. Now, you could leave it as it is, but make Jedi mode the one in the middle. Um, and then mm. you kind of have to be a Jedi to figure out Jedi mode. I, I kind of like that. There's a, there's a synchronicity there that works for me. Um, but car mode, I think, um, you don't want that to be quite so invisible. Um, okay, so I'll see you next. So again, the, um, this is a nice looking app in general, but there's really no reason why this um, this wizard shouldn't be full screen. Um, sort of being able to see half an activity behind it just kind of looks weird. Right. Um, so I'd stop that. Um, and also the uh, the next the next button you've got down here, like it, a, it looks really out of place, and b, it's kind of unnecessary. If you're doing the swipe um, the swiping stuff, you don't really need yeah, next. Yeah. 
Um, so is I there a page indicator that. already? There isn't. There's no page indicator. So maybe, maybe that's, that's a good right? thing yes. to show people. I think nowadays are trying to interact to know what to do or how to interpret the exactly. indicator. Exactly. So re replace the next with the indicator so people know they're supposed to swipe. Uh, we uh, hit close, we get the right, license. License, read through them. Yep. Yep. Well, you get a quick that? reader. Yeah, I got that. All right. Okay, good. Uh, okay, service status. So my initial reaction is that, okay, I see the service status LED. Uh, the graphics looks nice, but it, I don't have the context. Yeah, this means right? it's pretty meaningless at the moment. Right. So uh, let's have a look. We hit I. That gives us information about the developer. Question mark shows us what we've seen before. Okay. And settings. Uh, okay, so settings is where we actually turn it on and off. Well, that's interesting. So at the moment, it's going to do nothing unless we turn the uh, unless we turn the service on. Um, and then you can set up a bunch of exceptions. So this this all looks nice. Yeah, I'm going to have to put that in using a different keyboard. <laughs> um, car mode, Jedi mode. So it's it's all of these settings are all perfectly appropriate using this the standard setting yep. screen, which is nice as well. What I would comment on though is if you're looking at this main screen, you've kind of got the pseudo action bar thing happening. Uh, no menu button, which is nice. Um, but I turn this into an actual actual action bar where possible. Mm -hmm. So on, on this device, it, it certainly would work. And all three of these items here should really be in the overflow menu. They're they're not sort all of right. key things. This this is about the app. Um, yeah, also, I just want to point out the about screen. I, I can't think of a justifiable reason why the about screen would go full screen. Please don't do that. Um, it's it's just frustrating. Uh, it doesn't really achieve anything. Um, and so what I would actually do is have all three of these in the overflow menu and have one action which is enable disable mm. so that straight away you know how to you know turn it on or turn it off right um, yeah especially you know when I walk into the car you know I want a pretty convenient way to turn it on right but exactly. rather you have to launch the app go and into go settings. into the setting and you know check the checkbox right, see if I can yeah that's, get that's the gesture that I can't quite you know, figure it out. So I put it face down. Oh, when it faces down, it, it works. I tested it 15 times this morning, and Billy Rolex was asking me, why are you calling yourself? <laughs> <laughs> nice. I do it all the time. OK, all right. Um, yeah, and the other thing I'd point out is that the sort of the screen here, it, it does nothing. Um, and so, you know, if you've got all of this space, uh, again, server status, right. it's not clear, it wasn't clear to me what that meant. So obviously, yeah. it means whether or not the RD mute service right. is enabled. Uh, which it is now because we turned right. it on. So you know what? You, maybe you want to pull that right out of the settings and put it right here on the main screen, like server status. You know, just say is it on or is it off, and have right. a, a big red button you can press to turn it right. on. Um, if it isn't, um, you know, I think that's going to be much more sort of useful. You want to make it really easy for people to get started. Like I want to start this app, press the big enable button, and then flip it on its face right. and, and hear it tell me something. Uh, which is the other thing you may want to have on this home screen is tell me, is is the ringer disabled? What is the ringer volume? Because I've got the ringer on now. Um, right. Does it have a notification? Uh, I think you can turn them on. You okay. can turn on notifications. Right. But I, you know, if I open the app, I want that to tell me everything the notification would. Definitely. Yep. Um, so that's that's definitely something you want to be a little bit more uh, informative. You know, maybe bring some of that stuff from settings, put it on the home screen, make it easier for for users to understand, like. What is it? What do I have to do to make it do something new? Right. Uh, do that's you have any good. other? Yeah, that, that's all. Comments? That's all I have. All right. Yeah. Cool. All right. So it's been a bit of a, a rushed session today. We apologize again uh, for the bad echo at the beginning. Hopefully that's all sorted out. Uh, we're going to take off. Um, clear the room for Dan, Ian, and Dan's hat um, for the Friday review of games. Dan's got a new hat today. He's always got a new hat. Yes. We're going to see if we can uh, make him bring a new hat every week. Um, it's going to be a challenge, but I, I, I kind of think Dan's up to it. No, it's not going to be a challenge for Dan. No, it's <laughs> not going to be a challenge for Dan. Um, so hopefully they won't have any echo problems and you'll be able to see the games that they're reviewing in uh, full 720 high def. Um, so thank you everyone for joining us. We'll be doing this every week, uh, Fridays, 1 o'clock. Um, if you want to nominate your own games, for rev uh, games or apps uh, for review, there is a moderator page which we will be sharing on the uh, Android developers Google Plus page, which you can get to at developer.android.com slash plus for your convenient reference. And uh, yeah, we'll see you all next week. All right. Thanks very much. Thanks.